got another question for the carboxylic acids and derivatives playlist. So we're at number four now. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. I hope you like the video. I hope you find it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd absolutely love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got this synthetic route going from ethanol to lactic acid through compound E. So we've got to come up with the structure for compound E, which is formed when you react that ethanol with HCN. So there's the structure of the product there. That's a hydroxy nitrile. So basically the H from the HCN has gone onto this um, oxygen here. That's become a single bond, obviously. And the, the CN group has um, joined on to there. Moving on to the next part, so the reagent that could be used for step two is you could say aqueous H plus, or you could say H plus and H2O. You could even say something like aqueous HCl. Moving on to the bond angles in lactic acid. So I've highlighted the first one, so A, around this carbon. Well, all we've got to do is look at the number of electron regions around that central atom. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, the all bonding regions, there's no lone pairs in there, so the angle we get is 109.5 degrees. Moving on to bond angle B, so that's around this highlighted um, oxygen here, and you'll notice I've drawn up two lone pairs there. So what have we got around the oxygen? We've got two bonding regions, and we've also got two lone pairs. So the starting angle would be the same as that, 109.5, because we have got four regions around the oxygen, but because we've got two lone pairs, they repel more than the bonding regions and they take two and a half degrees off each for the angle. So it's gonna go down by five, taking that angle to 104.5 degrees. And moving on to bond angle C around this highlighted carbon atom. So again, just count up the electron regions, one, two, and the double bond count as one, so three. There's no lone pairs to worry about, so we're going to get equal repulsion around that, which gives us a 120 degree angle around that carbon. Moving on to part B, which deals with this mechanism. So the first thing we're going to do is suggest how the hydroxide ion can act as a nucleophile. So all we need to do really is give the definition for the nucleophile. So we can either say the hydroxide ion can donate an electron pair, or we can say that it can donate a lone pair. Moving on to part two, so the first bullet point, add relevant dipoles and curly arrows to show how the intermediate is formed in step one. So the first thing I've done is put the dipole across this CO double bond. There'll also be a dipole here, but that's not part of the mechanism. So I'm just showing the relevant dipole. Then if we look at what's happened here, that hydroxide ion has basically bonded to that carbon and this double bond is now a single bond and we've got a negative charge on the oxygen. So what's happened there, I'm gonna draw a lone pair on that oxygen. You don't have to, but you would. if you don't, you've gotta take the curly arrow from the minus sign. So I'm just gonna take a curly arrow. So a pair of electrons is gonna go from that lone pair to that carbon, which is effectively gonna give us this bond here. And then you can see we've got double bond going to single bond, so the electron pair in, it's actually the pi electron pair, they're repelled up onto that oxygen and they're going to, and again, I'm gonna put a lone pair on there um, to show that that electron pair has gone up to that oxygen. And then for the second bullet point, gotta add curly arrows to show how the carboxylic acid and this ion here is formed from that intermediate. So again, we're just looking at what's changed. So you can see that the double bond is reformed. So to do that, we're gonna take the curly arrow from the, because I've drawn the lone pair and I'm gonna take it from there, I'm gonna do that. Otherwise you'd have to go from the minus sign. So that explains how that's formed, but we also need to get rid of this here and the way that happens is we take a curly arrow from the CO bond, middle of the bond ideally, onto that oxygen. And then for the last part, it would have been so much easier if they'd done this. 
and that's because the chlorine of the acyl chloride can actually react with this hydrogen here on this alcohol group. So I'm going to get out my trusty lasso and do that, which means the products of the reaction are going to be this ester here and don't forget about that hydrogen chloride. 